This is Witchbase News for Friday the 23rd of August 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Titan 4 meets an explosive end the Buckyball Racing Club invites you to chase space zombies. There's a very special celebration for the folks at Lave Radio next week and more. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. On Monday the 19th of August at 1800 hours and 23 minutes standard galactic time the invading Thargoid Titan codenamed Thor suffered complete catastrophic meltdown and exploded. The foul caustic fear fruit had been under constant and sustained attack by independent commanders using guardian nanite infused anti titan torpedoes since Thursday the previous week. The destruction of Thor brings the total number of Thargoid Titan motherships who have been forcefully invited to depart the galaxy to 6. If you've been paying attention to events in the bubble in the last couple of years you'll know that this weeks events means that there are now just 2 of the original 8 titans remaining on the borders of human occupied space. The DCOH website that tracks the progress of the Thargoid war added a new feature to their titan monitoring this week in the form of a caustic damage level relevant to the destroyed husks of the former titan vessels. Useful if you're looking to dive into those areas scavenging for escape pods and Thargoid materials. If you do as well as checking the level of causticity still present around a given dead titan please be aware that those zones are themselves not devoid of Thargoid activity and you are still extremely likely to encounter patrolling goids in various forms. You'll find the DCOH linked below this video. At the time of their initial arrival it seemed to many in the community that the destruction or expulsion from our turf of the titans would be an insurmountable task. And whilst I don't wish to count our Tharglets before their gloopy unhatched leathery eggs have even rumbled it does now appear that we might be on the verge of a complete victory certainly over the salvation induced variety of invading Thargoid at least. As the great Thargoid war heads towards the setting sun over the horizon from the east there approaches the next great shift in the galactic status quo in the shape of Powerplay 2.0. Whilst at the very least one titan still remains and an individual with an agenda that it's been hinted at can communicate with the Thargoids remains largely unaccounted for there is always the distinct possibility that our goopy galactic neighbours still have a role to play in the coming shift in bubble affairs. Just a reminder the Alliance has released its former Thargoid captive citizens back into the general populace whilst the Federation and Empire have chosen to still keep theirs quarantined and under observation. If the former Azimuth experimentee Sojin A does indeed have the latent communication abilities that many suspect she has and if the released former captives of our invading neighbours have indeed been altered in some way by their experience then Sojin A could have herself an army of tens of thousands if not millions ready to go together with a base of operations from which to exert her own influence and power over the other players in the galaxy. The next torpedo target for the AX inclined commander is the Titan Ragin which at the time of recording has control of 154 systems. Powerplay 2.0 is scheduled to launch into Elite Dangerous next month. The latest in the Buckyball Racing Club's Triple Eight Championship starts today as at the time of recording and the sponsor for the latest outing in this years series is one Alec Horatio Olivia Neutron Turner. 
the, the newest race which is open for anyone to take part in is entitled Zombaland and, somewhat unusually for Buckyball, largely takes place in just one system on one single planet. The race tasks those competing with travelling between some set planetary outposts and settlements on Zomba A1A, landing at each one in turn and running to the nearest on foot terminal in the settlement, opening up the mission board before heading off to the next one. As is always the case with a buckyball race there are different classes for competing ships including a regulation cobra ensuring that anyone can compete regardless of the level of engineering they have access to. And again it's standard buckyball practice to include special bonuses you can achieve for more creative use of your time in the regular race all of which you can read about on the official Zombaland forum thread which is linked below this video. There is also a very active and friendly discord server associated with all things Buckyball which you'll also find linked below this video. There is always something happening with Buckyball and with the recent changes to engineering and new ships entering the game there has never been a better time to get involved. Should you go and read the aforementioned offending post by Alec Turner on the forums you'll likely note the story that Alec has spun around the reasons for choosing the Zomba system specifically. The Zomba system is one of the systems inhabited by the Burr Pit's in-game faction the Burian Protectorate. It's Alec's contention which is backed by some likely falsified video evidence that the system is so named because I, myself, am apparently an undead zombie. <laughs> he has since also made similar spurious claims against the other half of the Burr Pit YouTube channel our camera operator and video editor my wife Commander Rini. Yeah, yeah. The Burr Pit would just like to put the record straight now that we do not consider ourselves to be amongst the legions of the undead and would like to publicly refute any suggestions to the contrary. I dunno, you occasionally rise from the dead and eat a few brains and suddenly everyone has to label you an undead horror. Doesn't seem right to me. Should you choose to partake in the buckyball race and leave your ship unattended while you sprint to the nearest on foot terminal you of course do so at your own risk. Everything you need to know to take part is of course linked below. On the 22nd of February 2013 the first ever episode of Lave Radio was broadcast. At the time the alpha version of Elite Dangerous had just been released to Kickstarter backers in a very basic form. And when I say basic form what I mean is docking at a starport and outfitting your ship wouldn't be added until a month later. Trading, hyperspace and supercruise arriving around a week after that and the galaxy size being increased to a whopping 55 stars in July of that year. Imagine that. For as long as there has been an Elite Dangerous there has been a Lave Radio. The weekly podcast has, for the last decade, been broadcasting all the news, chatter, events and happenings in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy come rain or shine or indeed occasional drought. Through all the heydays, the good times and the trials and tribulations that Elite Dangerous has seen across the years there has always been Lave Radio, shining like a beacon neutron star for the community even through the very darkest of the darkest nights. Lave Radio is many things but above all across these many years it has been stalwart, reliable and consistent in its support of the beating heart of Elite Dangerous, its community. If this sounds like I'm about to announce the end of Lave Radio then take heart dear viewer for that is very much not the case. For their regular weekly live recording this coming Tuesday at 8.30pm UK time the crew of the venerable Orange Sidewinder will be celebrating nothing less than their 500th episode. Massive congratulations to everyone at Lave Radio past and present. 500 episodes is no small achievement in anyone's books and there are no signs whatsoever that the Orange Sidewinder bar will be bringing down the shutters anytime soon. Here's to the next 500. To catch Lave Radio live or listen to any of their previous shows you'll find a link in the description below this video. 
A quick reminder that the next episode of FDevs Now Must Watch monthly livestream offering Frontier Unlocked is landing next week on Wednesday the 28th of August. After the teaser image that we reported on last week we are expecting at the very least more details on the next ship to enter the game after the Type 8 landed in early access this month. Regular viewers to this broadcast will know that according to FDevs own launch schedule for the year there are still two more new ships to be fully revealed and a whole new feature to the game that is yet to be announced before 2024 leaves the room. As I mentioned at the top of the show Powerplay 2.0 is expected to launch next month which means the next livestream could at the very least see some more details on the revamped feature being dropped and FDev possibly even giving a firm launch window. Whatever the case and whatever we learn we will of course bring it to you right here. How many Titan takedowns have you participated in so far? Will you be catching the Lave Radio 500th episode live next week? And are you going to be risking life, limb or indeed brains with Buckyball this week? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.